and welcome back guys to another video here in the off-grid garage today with a very basic tutorial but almost everyone commenting on my capacity testing does get it wrong so i thought instead of replying to every single comment under my videos now where people get this wrong i make this video for everyone so i can just post the link well guys we are measuring capacity capacity is ampere hours and the formula is amps times hours while no do it this way while energy is watt times hours and the watts include the voltage and the amps so if you measure the energy coming out of the battery it is important to measure the correct voltage and the correct amps to calculate the watt and then integrate this over time to get the watt hours. But this is only valid for energy measurement, energy measurement, not capacity measurement. Going this way around again. Capacity measurement is ampere hours. The formula is A for amps times hours. There's no voltage included. And as you may have now read under my capacity videos, many people are commenting that I have dodgy connections. The, the cables are not thick enough. I need to polish the terminals of the battery cells. I have the wrong bus bars for that. And the cable is too thin. And these connections are not right. And the tester is not good enough. All this does not matter when you measure ampere hours, the capacity. I can have here the flimsiest and dodgiest connection with all my I mean, look at this. This is all flimsy, dodgy connections. Then connects here to the ring terminals. Then we've got these cables here connecting to the terminals of the tester. Well, it shows 3.24 volts, right? Far less than the actual battery. But the voltage doesn't matter because we are looking at the ampere hours here. And if I set this to one amp in a second, this one amp will go through all these dodgy cables through the tester and through the other dodgy cables and connections back to the battery. It is one amp. It doesn't matter what kind of resistance you have in these cables. This one is even a 0.5 millimeter cable. This one is a 1.5 and this one, this one is a four millimeter cable and we've got two in parallel. But this one amp travels through all of that because this is all a serious connection of resistors. Okay, let's start this test. There we go, one amp. We've got exactly one amp, right? So this one amp is going through here, through this cable, through the connection, through the tester, and through here again. This is all one amp. Here, one amp. I measure these cables here, one amp. Guess what, what happens here? One amp. And over here one amp then you can already see the ampere hours are ramping up and it takes exactly one hour now to discharge this battery with one ampere hour and the connections don't matter so and you probably can imagine what would happen if we extend these cables with a really really long cable like say a hundred meters this is like that many yards feet or something whatever you are calculating with 100 meter cable doing the same test you would say we will get different results at the end right but this is not the case it just takes longer to get there because the battery has still the same capacity 280 ampere hours and it wants to give up these amps over the time ampere hours but because the resistance is higher with a longer cable or worse connections, it just takes longer because the current is lower. So the battery can give these amps over a longer period of time to make up for it. We will have exactly the same result if we use longer cables. So it does not matter if I'm using a 100 millimeter cable here or if I use a 0.5 millimeter cable only. This does not matter the test will just take longer. So the better your connections are, the more current can flow and the less time you will spend with this test. But it doesn't change your test result at all. Okay, watch this 0.5 millimeter cable when I crank up the amps. Okay, all the way. 
to 18.6, this is the maximum I can get. Is it doing it again? Here we go. You can see the cable going down. The cable gets so hot now, see how flimsy it is. <laughs> it's super flexible and it's super hot. That's 18 amps for this little cable. Wouldn't make a difference. We still get the same result in ampere hours later on. Because we've got 18.5, we've got 18.5 amps here in the tester. And if I measure the current here at our melting cable, we will have 1805, 1807, um, 1801, 18.1 we have now here. 18.1, yeah. Well, you've got two different testers, you know, two different measurement devices. Okay, I'm just stopping the test here now. So, capacity, 0 0.65 ampere hours we have pulled. Regardless the connections, regardless the cable length, regardless how good my terminals are, regardless how good my crimping is, this all does not matter. The amps going through these cables and over time you get ampere hours, which is the capacity. So don't mix up capacity with energy. Energy is watt hours and what are voltage times amps. And if you want to measure the energy stored in these batteries, you need to be very precise with your voltage and you could never test it like this because you have massive, massive voltage drop on these terminals now. What you could do instead of using such a tester is using this tester because this one uses two wires to actually sense the voltage of your battery directly at the terminals. This connects to the negative and positive terminal directly at the terminals of your battery. So in this case, the voltage measurement is 100% accurate. And even with this tester, it does not matter how bad your connection is, how bad your crimping is, how bad your terminals are, how thin your cables are, how flimsy your alligator clips connecting to the bus bar. It does not matter at all. If you have such a setup, it will just take longer to get your ampere hours or it will take longer to get your energy in watt hours. But it only works if you measure directly at the terminals of the battery. You can never get the watt hours correct with this tester and such a setup. You probably could compare this to a garden house. You know, if you have a thin garden house only and you want to fill a tank with water, it takes longer than if you take a big garden house. But the capacity inside the tank will be the same. You're transferring the same amount of water inside the tank. It just takes longer with a thin hose. And this is exactly the same with the cables. If you have thin cables, bad connections, it just takes longer to get your ampere hours out of your battery. All right, guys, I hope this all makes sense now and I'm not confusing you even more. <laughs> well, it looks like a lot of people are still confused about capacity and energy and we are measuring capacity here. So no voltage included. It does not matter. All right, guys, so far this short video from today. Today is the last day of the year 2020. Thank you again so, so much for all your support, all your subscriptions, all your thousands of comments under my videos. I mean, this channel is rocket starting and we are all part of it. I'm so excited for the next year. There will be so many more videos coming. I have filmed already a lot of them. I just need to find some time to edit everything and upload it. There will be more coming, definitely. So you have a happy new year 2021. Stay safe, stay charged if you have batteries already or if you drive electric. And we will all see us again in the next year 2021 for more videos here in the off-grid garage. Thank you again, guys. See you then. Bye bye.